In true Naropa fashion, let us begin with a bow. Now we can't be here without a mask. Run! Good afternoon and welcome to Naropa University's Spring 2020 Virtual Commencement Ceremony. My name is Lorenzo Gonzalez and I am honored and pleased to be your Master of Ceremonies for this very special event. I thought it would be good for us to do this at a very special place. Unfortunately, we can't be at our own event center or at Mackey Auditorium where we usually have this event. So, I am outside of the Boulderado Hotel Event Center, a very special place, a very special landmark for Boulder. And from here, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you President Charles Leaf. Chuck was named the seventh president of Naropa University in 2012 and has deep connections to Naropa that span more than 40 years. Please welcome our president, Charles Leaf. Welcome everyone. I especially want to welcome the members of the Naropa Board of Trustees, staff, faculty, students, and of course our 2020 spring graduates. We all share the disappointment of having to move our celebration to this virtual format, but our colleagues have worked very hard to create an online experience which is worthy of the Naropa name, and I'm very grateful for all their effort over these many weeks. I want to especially note the generosity of dozens of Naropa alumni who are supporting this event financially and providing gifts for our graduates. These donations began with a matching grant offered by members of our Board of Trustees who are also Naropa alum. Many of the donors offered personal messages of greeting and congratulations, and we'll share those with all of you, the graduates. To begin with, I hope that you're all well and feeling reasonably safe. It's hard to offer graduation remarks at this time without resorting to cliches about how we have been pushed into an unexpected and uninvited new way of coexistence. But I can suggest that personal struggles and the challenges before us may be better managed if we tap into our contemplative practice and experience. If there were ever a time where it was crucial to hold our seats, to remain grounded to the earth, and to experience the powerful and certainly messy ways in which we're interconnected to each other and to the natural world, that time I think is now. And if there were ever a time when drawing from the well of experience of being kind to ourselves and being compassionate toward others was essential, that time is also now. Those are the practices, as you well know, which are interwoven throughout our curriculum and which were such an important aspect of your time at Naropa. As every graduate is well aware, our contemplative practices and our contemplative work was never an add-on or an elective. The power of working with the rich array of academic and artistic disciplines inside the container of mindfulness and compassion has defined a Naropa experience and Naropa education for the past half century. It represents the complete education of a human being and the evolution of what it means to truly be a warrior in the world. I know that you're well aware of the depth and the richness of our practices. Today, of course, mindfulness is everywhere and is often used as a tool to improve focus and productivity. On a relative level, there may not be anything inherently wrong with such an outcome, so long as those tools are not used to exploit those to whom the practices are presented. But there's much more to the practice and there's much more to the journey. Your diploma is a representation of years of genuine practice, genuine study, and genuine service to the world. And your accomplishments are so deserving of celebration. The diploma is also a license to practice a form of Naropa magic in a vast world that's in need of all that can be offered. What is so powerful, I think, about the current pandemic is the way in which the virus is an equal opportunity attacker 
Insecurity and fear is presented to everyone. The gap between us and them is much narrower than those uh, many of us are used to. And while we see a disproportionate impact on members of marginalized communities, including poorer people, people in prison, people of color, it's the reality that both the illness and the visceral fear of contracting the illness is close to all of us, regardless of our social location. And if some of us are fortunate enough to be well protected, I think it's safe to bet that every one of us has been looked at by somebody, some point, wondering if we will be the one to infect them. That may not be a conventional invitation to human engagement, but such a connection is crucial as we share this common experience with several billion of our fellow Earth dwellers. I'd like to feel good about offering some inspiring words of reassurance, some version of this too will pass and that will soon return to a kind of normality, even if it's somewhat different from what we thought of as normal just a few months ago. But the fact is that we are still living in an emotionally charged uh, moment of existence. And just saying that this will pass is not going to make it so. However, I'd argue that rather than adopting a depressed or a nihilistic view, we could all, as sentient creatures living as human beings, feel blessed about having the rich opportunities before us to be in relationship with others, even if the form is different. To learn, to teach, to create, to be inspired and to inspire others, to care for others and to be cared for. Our personal expression may be as a therapist, teacher, activist, artist, entrepreneur, many others, but I'm confident that each of you will have an unfolding story that will enrich the world and nourish those that you connect with, whether intimately, professionally, or casually. And whether the vehicle for our work and our expression is in person or virtual, the opportunity for genuine connection is still rich with possibility. And to bring things back to today, you've all been offered an Europa toolbox to support your efforts. I miss a lot by not being together in person. The bagpipes and the sashes, the courtyard crowded with family and friends when crowds were a thing, and rooms charged with excitement and maybe a touch of anticipation of what's next. But maybe most of all, I'll miss what is actually the least organized part of our graduation ceremony. That's the spontaneous crowd that gathers at the bottom of the stairs leading from the stage. The moment when the program faculty gather to greet and to congratulate the students that they work most closely with over their time at Naropa and who have been the focus of that faculty member's academic and practice life for so long. The hugs and the handshakes, the laughter, all manner of acting out is to me the essence of Naropa and is the most poignant reminder of why so many have worked so hard to keep this place vibrant and alive. But I'm confident that the faculty are no less delighted today and that their joy in witnessing your graduation is boundless and crosses the physical plane. I am also confident that regardless of the form, every single one of you today is fully empowered as a member of a lineage of thousands of Naropa graduates who came before and who have been making such an important difference in the world. Congratulations to all of you as graduates of Naropa University. You're all warmly invited to our next in-person ceremony where apart from the pleasure of hearing a second talk from the Naropa president, you will be able to celebrate and to be celebrated and to be able to do it together. As is tradition, I'd like to close with a few lines of a poem written by Naropa's founder, Trigam Trumpa Rinpoche. I always have felt that the poem was timely at a time of graduation, but perhaps even more so now. And just to note, I took the liberty of translating a couple of Sanskrit words into English for comprehension. In the jungles of flaming ego, may there be cool iceberg of awakened heart. On the racetrack of bureaucracy, may there be the walk of the elephant. May the sumptuous castle of arrogance be destroyed by diamond-like confidence. In the garden of gentle sanity, may you be bombarded by coconuts of wakefulness. All of us want to wish you the best of health, good dreams, and good life. 
We're proud to have shared time with each of you at Naropa and look forward to staying in contact as we go forward. Thank you all very much and again, congratulations. Well, it looks like we can't have our big event outside of the Boulderado Hotel Event Center. They kicked us out of there. So we're now down here on the Pearl Street Mall. And from here, I think it will be safe for me to introduce our honored guest speaker, Jerry Colonna. Jerry has been involved with Naropa for more than 10 years. First as a trustee, later as chair of the board for six years, but perhaps most importantly, as a Naropa parent. In his non-Naropa life, Jerry has been variously a magazine reporter, an investor in technology companies, an executive coach, and now founder and CEO of Reboot, a leadership development and coaching firm. Jerry is also the author of the award-winning book, Reboot, Leadership and the Art of Growing Up. Please welcome our honored guest speaker, Jerry Colonna. First off, I just want to explain I've got this fancy little microphone here to uh, help with the sound, so I hope it's not too distracting. And second, congratulations. Um, it's vital to pause and recognize accomplishments in our lives, and it's an honor for me to be a part of the collection of folks called to help you celebrate this moment. So thank you for gracing me with this opportunity. True grit is true love. These are such strange, unexpected, and bewildering times. And in my life, when I've been bewildered, I've turned to my elders for guidance. A few weeks back, when the virus-fueled crisis began, I turned once again to Ani Pema children. And once again, I found comfort in her teachings. In her book, Comfortable with Uncertainty, she wrote, All around us, the wind, the fire, the earth, the water, are always taking on different qualities. We also change like the weather. We ebb and flow like the tides. We wax and wane like the moon. We fail to see that like the weather, we are fluid and not solid. And so we suffer. What we fail to see is that we can use everything we do to help us to realize that we're a part of the energy that creates everything. If we learn to sit still like a mountain in a hurricane, unprotected from the truth and vividness and the immediacy of simply being part of life, then we are not this separate being who has to have things turn out our way. When we stop resisting and let the weather simply flow through us, we can live our lives completely. It's safe to assume that when she wrote those words, Ani Pema didn't envision a world ravaged by pandemic. I don't believe, for example, that when she wrote of the truth and vividness and immediacy of simply being part of life, she envisioned a world in which the racial and economic inequalities would be so undeniably revealed by, of all things, a virus. And while she may have understood the truth and vividness of the global climate crisis, I doubt she foresaw the speed with which the falsity of our tendency to live our lives as we always have, privileged, deluded, and secure in believing ourselves safe, would be ripped apart. As our wise elders demonstrate time and again, they see hurricanes long before the rest of us. That prescience often results in a wisdom that tells us precisely how we must hold ourselves. Still, like a mountain in a hurricane, never in my life has that call been so clear so clarion, so vivid, 
So true. But that call is also difficult to answer. It is dreadfully hard to sit still like a mountain. Moreover, the difficulty is exacerbated by what I believe to be a profound misunderstanding of what it means to sit like a mountain. For many, it evokes the notion of sitting with a kind of stubbornness, a nearly unfeeling and impossible to withstand rigidity that far too often we misread as courage or even strength. It evokes, as I wrote in my book, a false grit. False grit is brittle. It's the sense that we are nothing if we can't take a punch. In fact, we define taking a punch as the ability to not feel pain when we are punched. False grit is dangerous. It feeds a stubbornness that, in turn, can feed delusion. We mistake the tendency to delude ourselves that our relationship will improve, our companies will succeed, if only we double down on our old patterns, grip the steering wheel until our knuckles whiten and bear down. Stubbornness is not the hallmark of the warrior. True grit, I offered, is kind. True grit is persistent. True grit persists not in holding on to false beliefs against all evidence, but in believing one's inherent lovability and worthiness. True grit is the leader believing in the team's purpose, its capacity to overcome obstacles, and the relevancy of the cause. True grit acknowledges the potential of failure, embraces the fear of disappointment, and rallies the team to reach and try, regardless of the potential of loss. True grit, the capacity to stick with something to the end, stems from knowing oneself well enough to be able to forgive oneself. To have inquired deeply and steadily enough to find the deep sense of purpose that is beyond a personal mission statement. In that knowing of oneself, one is then able to stand as a single warrior amid a community of broken-hearted fellow leaders. I thought of True Grit recently when I watched Andrew Cuomo, the complicated governor of New York, read a letter from a farmer in northern Kansas. As many of you may have seen, the farmer noted that he and his wife were scared. She has only one lung, and he noted that remaining lung doesn't work so well. Nevertheless, and despite his fear, his heart was broken by what he saw happening in New York thousands of miles away, and he sent the governor one of five N95 masks he had from his pre-retirement days as a farmer. He kept four for his family to keep them safe. He instructed Cuomo, give it to a nurse or a doctor. The true grit of that farmer revealed itself not only in his willingness to share his broken open and fearful heart but in recognizing the vivid and immediate truth of our interdependence, even in the undeniable reality of impermanence. He knew New Yorkers, even the powerful and privileged governor, needed not only a mask, but to know that someone sees them and cares. For, you see, true grit is interdependence in action. I need you and you need me is a powerful and moving notion. It embodies compassion. But the notion becomes even more viscerally true when science shows that the only way we can stop the virus and start to heal the world is together. Moreover, it is compassionate wisdom that builds on science and demonstrates that the only way we can finally mend the systemic oppression that is killing so many of our fellow humans is if we do it together. 
You have spent years learning the teachings of not only the wise elders in your classrooms, but of those who came before us. Our ancestors have been preparing us for this time. At Naropa, we often speak of the warrior that heals the world. It is time for the warriors to rise up. This is what you have been working for. And as I shared recently with my teacher, this is why I have been sitting on the cushion for so many years, to meet the world as it is right now in this moment. You have sat together. You have learned together. You have cried and grown together. Now, go love together. For always remember that true grit is also true love. And love wins. Always. Thank you. Well, we got kicked out of the Pearl Street Mall also. So we thought it would be best for us to come someplace where there's some peace and quiet. And so here up in the mountains is where we found a little bit of peace and quiet. And this is a great location for me to introduce our beloved retiring faculty member, Judith Simmer Brown. Judith is Distinguished Professor of Contemplative and Religious Studies at Naropa University, where she has taught as founding faculty member since 1978. Judith, we love you and we will miss you. Welcome everyone and good afternoon. We all realize that this graduation will go down in history as the pandemic graduation. Later in life, you're going to be explaining to your grandchildren how you survived the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. Rebecca Solnitz, A Paradise Built in Hell, surveys disasters and catastrophes of the last century, from the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 to Hurricane Katrina in 2005. She finds that, contrary to prevailing notions, in disasters, human beings often rise to the occasion to help each other, to create new solutions, and to share resources in surprising ways. And they do this joyfully, without hesitation, often uncharacteristically. These are the people we all want to be. In fact, these are the people we are. Not everyone responds this way, she found. Distant politicians, elites, and opportunists can react in ugly ways, exploiting disasters, blaming or targeting the victims, fomenting conflicts, and making a buck. She details the police shootings after Katrina, the ethnic hatred that followed 9-11, Disasters can play on our worst fears, resulting in hoarding, bigotry, overwhelm, and depression. We are seeing how much this pandemic is triggering an international crisis in mental health, poverty, homelessness, and hunger. But at the, at the heart of every disaster, there are helpers. Mr. Rogers' mother famously observed, Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. How can we become the helpers? It's not automatic, though it's more likely when we train. That is the goal of a Naropa University education. Our mission statement says that we are committed to preparing our graduates to both meet the world as it is and to change it for the better. How are we doing this? The core of every degree curriculum are mindfulness, awareness, and compassion trainings, preparing you to trust the present moment, to trust your own innate intelligence and heart, and to trust it in others as well. Rather than premeditating artificial theories or rehearsing strategies for hypothetical situations, we prepare ourselves to be present, caring, and creative in the face of an uncertain future. 
the early Buddhist texts of India proclaimed that those who train in mindfulness, awareness, and compassion can develop what is called in Sanskrit, anutpatika dharma kshanti. Say that, see if you can say it. Anutpatika dharma kshanti. The literal translation is difficult to explain, but we could gloss this term as comfortable with uncertainty or tolerant of ambiguity, or very sim simply joyfully accepting groundlessness. Science calls this quality resilience. When we see that external structures of our world are fragile and unreliable and cannot give the security and happiness we thought they could provide, we instead learn to trust inherent goodness and strength in the moment. These are the people we all want to be. In fact, these are the people we are. But it's not enough to just tolerate uncertainty. If we are just holding on in the midst of this pandemic, waiting for things to get back to normal again, we will be sorely disappointed. That normal cannot return, nor should it. The urgency of the climate crisis, the increasing disparity between the wealthy and the subsistent peoples and cultures, and the dangerous state of international politics have shown us that this pandemic is pointing out the fundamental flaws in our current societal structures. We need people who are willing to help, who are willing to lead, and who are willing to collaborate with others, pooling their creativity and daring to restructure our world. These are the people we all want to be. In fact, these are the people we are. Once we relax into the uncertainty of our time, with the only certainty being that of change, we need to sustain one bellwether, the bellwether of compassion. We need to remember this moment, how connected we are now with everyone and everything in the world, whether or not we are in lockdown. Rebecca Solnit found that the remarkable loving acts that arise within disaster tend to fade once the crisis is past. The heartfelt intimacy in New York after 9-11 later turned into impersonal callousness that the city can be famous for. Can we stay attuned to others and what they need and practice compassion? Can we extend our care to a larger world while caring for ourselves as well? As our founder, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche said, we must try to think beyond our homes, beyond the fire burning in the fireplace, beyond sending our children to school or getting to work in the morning. We must try to think how we can help this world. If we don't help, nobody will. It is our turn to help the world. I know that the way ahead is uncertain, but the power of human compassion and creativity can trace the way ahead and find how we can live together more sustainably, more inclusively, and more joyfully. Right in this Zoom room are people who have developed Anutpatika Dharma Kshanti, joyfully accepting change. These are the people we all want to be. In fact, these are the people you are. Congratulations, graduates. I wish you all the very best. Well, we have to come down from the mountain, which gives us a great opportunity to grab bite to eat. And it also gives me a chance to do my traditional reading of the fortune cookie for the graduates. So here we go. This cookie does not contain the fortune you seek. Try again. Let me try again. Oh, you may look into the future and you may look into the past, but do not stare. Now there's a good fortune. Here's something that you can stare at. Next, I would like to present our student performers, the Somatic Cohort. They will be performing on doing aloneness. Our movers are...
Gabriela Alexis Garza Vasquez, Marcy Lauren Holland, Kendra Kemias, Mariela Kent, Marie Jacobs Doherty, Arrow Zoe Rojas, and the furry performer Sequoia. This film was edited and filmed by Len Bliss the Fourth. if we're practicing sports. So we're out here by Stasio Fields, close to my home campus of Nalanda, tossing the ball, where it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the student speaker, Jenna Nabila Jennings. Jenna is graduating with a Master's of Arts in Religious Studies. Her concentration is contemplative religions. Congratulations, Jenna. Hello, friends and Naropa staff and faculty that have supported our academic success and our loved ones who are here to celebrate our commencement with us today. I wish I could be in physical space with you and look out at your smiling faces, but a circumstance would have it, we're taking better care of each other at this distance. I don't have a lot of time with you, so I'm gonna make it short and sweet. You did it, you're a rock star. Now dust your shoulders off and do a little dance and celebrate yourself. Are you dancing? We all have pasts full of hardship and struggle. 
and some of us definitely more than others. And I see those of you who are bringing justice to those stories. But despite the odds, you, me, we made it here to today. Graduates, students who have put in the time and hard work to develop some form of mastery. Now it's time to set out in a new world that needs the gifts only you can bring it. Now is the time to live beyond the limitedness of who you think you are. It's time to live in the boundless landscape of being who only you can be. If you fall, my dear, remember you can always reclaim your life and say yes to your beating heart. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. It never is. We are the leaders of today, not tomorrow. There's always someone seeing us. Show them that true leaders lead by the every moment bravery of their willingness to live by their hearts. There is so much we don't know. Let your small and defeating visions of yourself and others go. And open up to the raw beauty of the present without your projections. Especially in this daunting and uncertain time we live in because of coronavirus. Be strong in your determination to live. Plant your feet on the sacred earth. Stand up tall and feel your chest open to the vibrancy of love and live your best life every day. When our feet hit the floor every morning, every moment our breath is breathed, we have the opportunity to make the decision to show up or check out. What will you choose? I hope you choose to be brave. Life is hard. That will never change. But my darling, you can. You can grow stronger, more resilient every day. And resilience, resilience is a warrior's trait. bless you. Thanks, Mom. Well, we had to leave the fields. And so we're now here in the middle of the creek to remind you that no one washes themselves in the same waters twice or something like that. You see, this is the moment you've been waiting for, the announcement of the graduating students. Yes, you have been working hard for it and you have earned it, this is it. Congratulations. The name of the graduate students will be read by Urko Taskin. He is core assistant professor in the MA in contemplative psychotherapy and Buddhist psychology. The names of the undergraduate students will be read by the Dean of Naropa College and core associate professor in the BA Contemplative Psychology, Carol Clements. Congratulations!
The degree of Master of Arts, Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Contemplative Psychotherapy, and Buddhist Psychology. Leah Naomi Kaminker. Luke C. Colburn. Corel Jean Comer. Lucia Cordero Driver. Don M. Dieno. John Dickey. Katie Dyer. Martina Christina Holzach. Sean Yvette Joyner. Charlotte Karina Yule. Benjamin Masland Keating. Autumn Marler. Ryan O'Million. Corey Paradise. Shannon Rice. Sandra Rodriguez. CJ Mitchell Sutton. Carson Will. Julia Margaret Wilson. Jahue Yu. The degree of Master of Arts, Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Concentration in Somatic Counseling, Body Psychotherapy. Meredith Antonucci. Vanessa Herzog. Michelle Rosenthal. The degree of Master of Arts, Clinical Mental Health Counseling, Concentration in Somatic Counseling, Dance Movement Therapy. Gabriela Alexis Garza Vasquez. Marcy Lauren Holland. Murray Jacobs Doherty. Kendra Kamenis. Mary Ella Kent. Lauren McKee Pass Erickson. Maria Benay Robinson. Sierra Alexis Sherritt. The degree of Master of Arts, Clinical Mental Health Counseling. Concentration in Somatic Counseling, Body Psychotherapy, and Dance Movement Therapy. Jamie Mante. Christine Zappa. The Degree of Master of Arts, Clinical Mental Health Counseling. Concentration in Transpersonal Counseling Psychology, Mindfulness-Based Transpersonal Counseling. Anne Clark Bailey. Brittany Barth. Claire Bergeau. Sarah Bolden. Melissa Havana Caicedo. Chris Cannon. Kutomi Daniel Castro. Christopher Cole. Kemba Douglas. Sofia Drobinskaya. Christopher Ingler. Alec Farbman. Ventana Guerin. Ariella Gary. Leslie Gray Hank. Charlotte Elizabeth Irving. Andrew Cook. Brittany Marie Cragness. Jamie Martin. D. 
Christine Morales. Carolyn Monroe. Renee Pastor. Gillian C. Pierce and Goose. Jamie Victoria Quayle. Ruth Faye Randall. Alejandra Ruiz. Sean C. Rybecki. Sean A. Scott. Andrea Beth Siegel. Derek Shane. Ashley N. Smith. Lindsay Marie Sugo. Claire Rose Sullivan. Maria Rosario Vergara Anduesa. Guinevere Weiss. Lindsay Elizabeth Wellmaker. Alyssa Christina Wright. The Degree of Master of Arts, Clinical Mental Health Counseling. Concentration in Transpersonal Counseling Psychology, Transpersonal Art Therapy. Dakota Acosta. Brie Bessette. Marli Cavaliero. Crystal Michelle Englund. Alyssa Beth Gursky. Carrie Ann Hernandez. Max DeHaven Hitchcock. Marta Yashinska. Allison Oates. Erica O'Connell. Elizabeth Recamp. Catherine I. Rosenblatt. Marin Campbell Smith. Allison Tibbetts. Brittany Villani. Jessica Ivy Vazaleski. The Degree of Master of Arts, Clinical Mental Health Counseling. Concentration in Transpersonal Counseling Psychology, Transpersonal Wilderness Therapy. Sidonia Dunkley. Heather Ann Hendry. Caitlin Lorraine Low Hoover. Courtney Crystal Mackey. Teresa Martin. Reese Rose. Jason Thomas Swick. Eric Vino. Sky Yardeni. The Degree of Master of Arts, Eco Psychology. Sydney Buckles. Sigourney Tegan Campia. Azul Del Grasso. Meredith Doherty. Tanya Escudero. Audrey Marie Larue. Dakota Ashley Limon. Kat Pontaleo. The Degree of Master of Arts, Religious Studies, Concentration in Contemplative Religions. Olivia Sophie Franzen. Jenna Nabila Jennings. The Degree of Master of Arts, Religious Studies with Language, 
Concentration in Indo-Tibetan Studies Andrew Callahan Morse Jose Luis Ruiz Nathaniel Wardchain The Degree of Master of Arts Resilient Leadership Cheryl Führer Vanessa Lomestre The Degree of Master of Divinity Jiang Guangxi Chelsea Kyle Gifford Petria Jacqueline MacDonald William Fordham Murdy III Kai Sullivan The Degree of Master of Fine Arts, Creative Writing Kathleen Michelle Langour Amber Ann Ridenour The Degree of Master of Fine Arts, Creative Writing and Poetics Christina Maria Chaddy Sam Cook Alexander Joseph Kinso Kendra Noel Richard The Degree of Master of Fine Arts, Theatre, Contemporary Performance Carl Baumann Medea Luisa Angelica Budgas Nigel Q. Newton Selina Pearl Miluski David Preby Molly Jane Kirk Bradford Rosenblum Lauren Sagendorf Nisha Singh R. Scott Zaborski The Degree of Bachelor of Arts Contemplative Art Therapy Erica Marie Brigger Olivia Fuller Newman. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Elementary Education. Adrian Mack. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology. Concentration in Contemplative Neuroscience. Christopher Rachal. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology, Concentration in Psychological Science. E. C. Fails. Brianna Evie Healy. Jacqueline Lee McIntosh. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology, Concentration in Psychology of Health and Healing. Hannah Emily Feely. Gretchen Marie Moonbeam Gardebring. Jana Grice. Devin Michael Radigan. Bonnie Fiona McWethy. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts. Contemplative Psychology, 
Concentration in Psychology of Health and Healing in Transpersonal and Humanistic Psychology. Gabrielle L. Testa. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology, Concentration in Somatic Psychology. Marina Camargo Bata. Gillis Rain Brost. Molly Mackenzie Bremner. Genesee Carcello. Claire Maureen Connolly. Connor Brandt Hecula. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology, Concentration in Transpersonal and Humanistic Psychology. Kenna Faust Cavendish. Morgan Alexandra Kusmer. Tiffany Liz Rudashevsky. Karim Smithstone. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology and Environmental Studies, Concentration in Psychological Science. Winona Electra Washington. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology and Yoga Studies, Concentration in Psychology of Health and Healing. Matthew Tyler Passage. Tanner Raw. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Contemplative Psychology and Yoga Studies, Concentration in Somatic Psychology. Erica Therese Feely. Madeline Manning. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing and Literature. Harris P. Armstrong. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Early Childhood Education and Environmental Studies. Mary Colleen Lohr. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Environmental Studies. Kimberly Ann Brennan. Anicha Haruhi Cannon. Kaya Rose McCarville. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Kara Ashley. Samantha Kate Benowitz. Eden Irez Slot. Lucille Heller. Audrey N. H. Meadowcroft. Sylvia Snow. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Visual Arts. Remy Ariel Christ. Elian Israeli. The Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Yoga Studies. Ha T. Kim Huynh. 
Denise Joy Lane. John Quan No. Corey Soba. Well, you are now all graduates. Congratulations. Wouldn't it be great if we could be here at this amphitheater and hear our next performer, Mark Miller. Mark Miller has been a professor at Naropa for over 20 years. He has been chair of the BA music program and he is now retiring. Mark, we will miss you. You are loved and very special to all of us. Mark composed this piece especially for this occasion, the Naropa Song. Mark Miller and the Naropa Song. From that dear old hall called Sycamore to the shores of Paramita Lake The sound of one hand clapping Is the one we strive to make Ah, the locations for our bodhisattva here Our cry in Shunyata we proclaim Naropa, Naropa, Nirvana is our aim Naropa, Naropa, Nirvana is our aim. At Naropa we love animals. We are GMO and gluten free. We prioritize diversity, though at times that's hard to see. We will tell you that contemplative is the thing that we all do. Naropa, Naropa, we hope you do it too. Naropa, Naropa, we hope you do it too. Now, in my darkest moments, when I'm sitting Zazen all alone, I think about Naropa and why he left home. Now it wasn't just that old hag who led him to resign. Naropa, Naropa, he couldn't teach online. Naropa, Naropa, Line. From that dear old hall called Sycamore To the green at Paramita Lake The sound of one hand clapping Is impossible to fake The proof of bliss and emptiness Was the spark in Rinpoche's eye Naro Naropa, forever sparks will fly. Naropa, Naropa, forever sparks will fly. Well, this is it. We have reached the end of our beautiful ceremony. Thank you all for tuning in. And on my part, thank you for allowing me to be your master of ceremonies. It has been a great honor and an incredible pleasure. At this point, we would probably be all heading out over here to the exit of Mackey Auditorium where we would hug you and wish you all the best and see your smiling faces for one last time this year.
meet your friends and your parents. So a big hug and all the best for the years to come. We will end in the traditional Naropa way with a gong and a bow. But please stay tuned at the end for a series of photos from the academic year.